Hi children, good morning. Uh, let's study a new lesson today. That's poetry, television. After this lesson, you will have a unit test. That means uh, one prose and one poetry. Prose we already have taken. The lesson, um, Uncle Poja leaves for work and television. Okay, after this lesson, um, study, prepare for unit test. It will be taken as marks will be taken for a half yearly exam. So take it seriously and study. Children, I take television and I'll be coming back after taking this television to Canterbury Ghost. Uh, usually I used to skip this lesson um, but I learned that children are very very interested in this lesson. So I'll be back after taking this lesson television. There's a poetry by Roy Dahl. Okay. Before this, I uh, you know what are the uses of television and how it helps you. Uh, but there are many um, ill effects also for watching television. Nowadays, we are not at all concentrating on television because uh, we have our smartphone. We are more interested in smartphone than television, isn't it? But earlier, uh, the smartphone was not invented and also when uh, this television was invented, people were completely addicted to it as we are addicted to mobile phones. Okay, so uh, see, uh, let's go back to uh, many years. Okay, and um, I think that it is uh, if, if, even before our parents' age. Okay, that means uh, once the television was in, uh, invented, people were interested in that. The children, those who were in front of the TV, they used to watch, um, continuously they watched. That is why the author speaks or the poet speaks about how it affects the children, especially the children. And the poet advises that you must uninstall this television from our home. That is a request, that is an advice from the poet. This is a poem, you have to take it a little seriously because the same poem is there in 10th standard also. That's why I take this lesson. Okay, children, um, let's go to the author, page number 81. Roald Dahl was an English, sorry, British novelist, short story writer, poet and screenwriter. He had also worked as a fighter pilot. He is the author of famous children's books such as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda and the BF, BFG. Television is a song that you will find in Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. You have studied something related to Charlie and the Chocolate Factory last year also. And you have learned many stories related to it. I know definitely because last year my students, that means 60 year students, they told me that they took the book from the library and they used to read it. They are very interested in it. That's why I hope that you are also interested. All of you are interested. That's why I don't want to tell more about this Charlie and Chocolate Factory. This particular poem is taken from Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Okay, recently, one of the uh, students, um, when I was talking to him, he also told that I just listened to this Charlie and Chocolate Factory in YouTube. Okay. Anyway, I think that you are very interested in it. Uh, he's a British novelist, short story writer, poet and screenwriter. What do you mean by screenwriter? Screen. What, you, what is it? Film. Okay. That's related to film. Uh, film, uh, that means he used to write scripts for films. He had also worked as fighter pilot. What is the meaning of fighter pilot? He fought for, uh, especially for um, this, uh, in, uh, through literary works he fought. He advocated through literary works. He is the author of famous children's books such as Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Matilda. Another book is Matilda and the BFG. And this particular poem is taken from Charlie and Chocolate Factory. Okay, let's listen to the poem. 
that's written by Roald Dahl. This is a very interesting poem. After this, um, if it was in the class, I would have told you to uh, make especially a debate based on television. My students usually used to make a debate based on whether television is helpful or uh, whether it is um, badly affects us. Okay. And there uh, must have been two opinions. I think that you also will come out. And um, now I feel that although there are many bad effects of watching television, it also gives us some knowledge. But the point is completely against using television by children. Okay, here uh, argues in the point of view of television affects the children bad. Let's read the poem now. Before that, some questions are given there in the textbook. Let's go through it. How did people entertain themselves before the invention of the television? Do you think television has changed our lives for better or worse? Let's read a humorous poem about being glued to the TV. Okay, we'll see um, how, whether the poet is against or in favor of watching television. And this particular poem. Okay, let's read the poem. Please listen to it. The most important thing we have learned so far as children are concerned is never, never let them sit near television set. Or better still, just don't instant idiotic thing at all. In almost every house we have been, have watched them gaping at the screen. They loll and slope and launch about and stare until their eyes pop out. They sit and stare and say, stare and sit until they are hypnotized by it. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. They don't climb out the window sill. But did you ever stop to wonder what this dust here belonged to it? It roars the sense in the head. It kills imagination that he can no longer understand a fantasy, a fairy land. His brain becomes as soft as cheese. His powers of thinking rust and freeze. All right, you will cry. All right, you will see. But if you take the set away, what shall we do to, to entertain the, our daily children? Please explain. We'll answer this by asking you what use the darling must do. How used they keep themselves contented before the monster was invented? They used to read. They would read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more. Great Scott, yes, books. One half their lives was reading books. Such wondrous, fine, fantastic tales of dragons, gypsies, fields and whales and treasure islands and distant shores where some smugglers rowed with muffled oars and pirates wearing purple pants and sailing ships and elephants. Oh, books! What books they used to know! Those children living more long ago. So please, oh please, we beg, we pray. Go, throw your TV set away. And in its place, you can install a lovely bookshelf on the board. Fear not, because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do, they will now begin to feel the need of having something to read. And once they start, oh boy, oh boy, you watch the slowly growing joy that fills their hearts. They will so grow so keen, they will wonder what they have ever seen in that ridiculous television screen. And later, each and every kid will love you more for what you will teach. Let's see the poem into detail. At the beginning of the poem, what does the poet say? The most important thing we have learned means in their age, the poet as well as many others have learned 
So far as children are concerned, means that is related to children, he is never, never let them sit your television set. Okay, that means you don't allow the children to sit in front of the television set. That is the thing that they have learned at present. Or oh, better still, just don't install the idiotic thing at all. He calls this TV as the idiotic thing. What is the meaning of idiotic? Foolish thing. Okay, and install means to fix the furniture. You don't fix the furniture on the wall of your home to uh, allow the children to watch television. That is the advice that is given by the poet at the beginning of the poem, television. In, and the poet is explaining, in almost every house we have been, and we have watched them gaping at the screen. Why, why did he say that you should not allow the children to sit, um, allow them to sit in front of the television because he has seen or the people of his age have seen almost every house they have gone, they watched them gaping at the screen. What is the meaning of gaping? Become wide open means continuously watching your eyes will be fixed on the television screen and it will be wide open with wonder. And that is why you should not allow the children to sit in front of the television set. And uh, what does he see again? The low and slow and launchable. What's the meaning of low and slow and launchable? Dress casually and sit. Means they are not at all bothered about how, bothered about how do they sit. They just sit or lie down on the sofa and will be watching the television in a relaxed manner or in a casual manner. They will be sitting in front of the television and they will be enjoying and stare until their eyes pop out. What's the meaning of stare? Look, look fixedly. Okay, that means they want to know what is going to happen there in the television set. So they will be staring at the screen and until their eyes pop out. What does it mean? Uh, he even says that he exaggerates that sometimes uh, uh, he feels that they are sitting and they are um, fixedly looking at the screen until their eyes come out. Okay, that's exaggeration. Um, their eyes may not be coming out, but you see there will be changes in their eyes. After watching long hours of television, it affects your eye, eyesight. And they sit and stare and stare and sit. He used repetition to tell the fact that continuously they are watching. After continuously uh, they watch, they become addicted to the team. Hypnotized means um, capture the whole attention of someone. Okay, that means the TV screen capture the whole attention of the children. Means they are completely addicted to it. They cannot live without this television. They will become to such a stage. Okay, that means after com complete watch, in continuous watching, they become addicted to it. After that, once they are addicted, they are not able to move away from the television set. They will be always sitting in front of the television screen. Okay, clear? And, oh yes, we know it keeps them still. Why, does the, why do the parents allow the children to sit in front of the television set? There is reason why. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. Means, if you keep your children in front of the television screen, you can do many other things. They won't disturb you. Otherwise, they will be always coming after you, mother. They will be calling mother and they will disturb your work. But all these things are not possible once they are in front of the television screen. Oh yes, we know it keeps them still. They will be in a fixed position. They will not move from there. They will be sitting only, they won't play, they won't break the things, they won't uh, uh, fight each other. Nothing will happen if they are in front of the television set. So it is a benefit for the parents. Okay. They don't climb out the window sill. Okay, that means otherwise, 
if uh, nothing is there they will be climbing upon the window and they but did you ever stop to ponder what this does to your window thought and he is asking to the parents whether they have ever thought um, what, what ill effects will bring about to your little thought did it without thought means without young child that means have you ever thought of how it badly affects your children okay if you allow them to sit in front of the television because you want to be free you want to do your work but have you ever thought how it affects badly your children and he is giving more explanation how it affects the children and it is given in capital letters in order to stress okay it tells about the consequence of watching television it draws the sense in the head the first consequence of continuous watching of television is it draws the sense in the head okay that means we have the capacity to think we have intellectual power but continuous watching of television destroys or uh, rots you know the meaning if the food is rotten you cannot eat it okay so the sense is completely decayed or rotten it kills imagination dead the other consequence of watching television is it kills imagination dead that means if you are reading a book for example if you are reading a story where, uh, which is a fairy uh, related to a fairy land and uh, you don't know uh, means you are not seeing the things so you will be imagining what is happening there and you will see the pictures in your mind but once you see the television screen everything is being projected in the tv screen so that it, there is no chance of imagination so uh, he tells that um, it kills imagination that it kills the power of imagination for the little child you know that if you have the imaginative power then only you will be able to enjoy the things in the nature and you can write even great poetry okay earlier many poets have born just because they have enjoyed the things but you see that it kills imagination that he can no longer understand a fantasy fairy land okay fantasy and fairy land that is there in the book okay so what is the meaning of fantasy Well, fantasy means faculty of imagining impossible things. Okay, if you read a book, you will be um, thinking about impossible things. Even impossible things, you will think. Okay, and also fairy land. What is the meaning of fairy land? Human form with magical powers. Okay, uh, there will be many characters in which. and uh, they have human body but they have magical powers they will be very small in size but they have extraordinary magical powers and these were the stories which we used to read and you also must read that okay that's what the um, poet tells and also the next consequence is his brain becomes as soft as cheese what is meaning of as soft as cheese the simile is used there it is just it becomes just like cheese what is the uh, significance of cheese it can make into any shape okay so i uh, it does not have any proper decision it will be moving according to your instinct there is no control for it so everything will be destroyed by watching television his powers of thinking rust and freeze what is the meaning of rust when you use a means if you have a knife at your home if you are not using it continuously it becomes rust once your brain is not used it becomes rust that means there is no more power for it the intellectual power and other capabilities that is there in your brain it becomes rust okay that means no more it cannot be used uh, comes to it that stage and freeze means after that it's very difficult to uh, change uh, change or uh, you see um, it becomes very rigid you cannot make it flexible okay understood 
All right, you will cry. All right, you will say. But if you take the set away, all right, you will say means when the poet is asking you to uninstall the TV set, you will say all right. And after that, we will, you will have another question. What will be that? What what shall we do to entertain our darling ch children? Please explain. That means now this is the only way to make them entertain. Okay. If we take it away, what we will give them to entertain? That's a question which will be asked by the parents uh, if they uninstall this television. And the poet and the people in his age, uh, he is telling that we will answer this by asking you another question. That means I am not going to respond to you by giving a ready-made answer, but I will ask you another question. What used the darling must to do? How used they keep themselves contented before this monster was invented? If you answer this question, then you will understand how can you make your children entertain. That means before this monster television was invented, how did they entertain themselves? How did the children used to entertain themselves? If you know the answer to this question, you can easily answer uh, the question for how to entertain the darling children. Okay. And the poet himself is telling the answer very slowly. They, the children, used to read, used to, used to, you know that that shows the habit. We have already learned it in the grammar, grammar section. They used to read. What was the work that they did to entertain themselves? Only read. He repeats it. They read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more. Means only what they did was read. Every time they read. Whenever they go time, they read. Uh, whenever they were free, they read. Okay, whatever the opportunities they got, they read. That was the only way to entertain themselves before this monster was invented. Great Scott, gas soups, what's the meaning of that? That is expressing surprise. Okay. One half of their lives was reading books. Means if they have um, 12 hours a day for doing the works, 6 hours they completely used for reading. One half of their lives was completely devoted to reading books. That was the only way to um, entertain themselves before this monster was invented. Such wondrous, fine, fantastic tales. What did they read? What were the subjects of their um, books? The children, such wondrous, fine, fantastic, fantastic, you know, extraordinarily attractive, attractive stories they selected of dragons, dragons, you know, giant reptiles, okay, um, there is mythical, uh, that means all these are not actually uh, the real characters, real, real creatures, this used to make them imagine many things, isn't it? Uh, sometimes you might have heard in your childhood from your grandmother or grandfather about magical powers that is uh, told by them just to make your uh, sense of imagination grow. Okay. Of dragons. They read the stories of dragons, gypsies. Gypsies means traveling people. And uh, some of the subjects or the topics were of gypsies. Queens, you might have heard of queens and kings, and whales, whales, large creatures, and this is wonderful for the little children. And treasure rises, you must have seen um, Robert Louis Stevenson, uh, Stevenson's Treasure Island in the library, and some of you might have read it. Okay, and there you will see a lot of things that you can imagine, and distant shores. Okay. Were smugglers robbed with muffled paws. Smugglers means the person who smuggled things. And they went to the boat. And boat and 
uh, how did they board this boat with muffled oars muffled means uh, muted means they, the sound should not be heard so that they can easily smug, smuggle things okay and uh, these were the topics of their books and pirates wearing purple pants also there were characters in the in these stories uh, the pirates will be the main characters and they wore purple colored pants and sailing ships and elephants also they read about the stories of sailing ships and large elephants oh books what books they used to know okay they he cannot even tell how wondrous these books were those children living long ago that means long ago long years back the children used to read these types of stories and they were wondering about such stories so please oh please we beg we pray go throw your tv set away that's a request from the part of the poet and he tells that we are begging you to throw the tv set away to uninstall the tv set away and in its place you can install a lovely bookshelf on the wall okay that means already it will um, the tv will be fixed on the wall the that you can take away take it out away and in that place you can start a bookshelf there will be there should be a lot of books fear not because we promise you that in about a week or two of having nothing else to do they will now begin to feel the need of having something to read that means sometimes they will be attacking you fighting you and since you have taken away the tv set they will even beat you and many other violent activities will be there but you do not do not be afraid because after one or two weeks and uh, since there is nothing else to do slowly they will take one book and after that they will be interested in again they will be taking another book again many other books so slowly they will have the habit of reading because there is nothing else to do there is no uh, tv uh, so uh, forcefully they will be taken it and knowingly they will take it and once they start oh boy oh boy okay and oh boy oh boy you know that uh, in earlier days the people uh, were uh, uh, pulling the logs isn't it okay that means the people used to pull the logs by themselves in order to get strength they will produce a sound and uh, this is such a sound that means once they start they will be continuing it that's what he wanted to tell and this uh, books reading books will enhance imagination thoughts the knowledge wisdom and satisfaction of mind all these will be bringing about reading books you watch the slowly growing joy you will see the children will be enjoying reading that fills their hearts what's the meaning of joy joy means the happiness that will not be changing according to the circumstances sometimes if you get a mobile phone or tv once you watch a program you will be happy but after that you will be sad again but once you read the book the poet is telling that they will be having the joy joy that is another word that's uh, that's better than the word happy happy is um, temporary while joy is permanent it will, even if something happens or if something is not happening they will be happy forever that is joy uh, so they will have this joy that fills their heart once they read the book once they have the habit of reading so, because once they read again they will uh, have the tendency to know the story more another book they will take and they want to proceed that that is normally happening if you are interested in reading you will continuously read i am requesting you also to read if you don't have a habit of reading they grow so keen 
they will wonder what they had ever been in that ridiculous television screen. Okay, so slowly they will be very interested. Keen means very interested, and they will be thinking why we had spent so much time in front of that TV set, in front of that television screen. Uh, if we had used this time for reading books, it must have benefited, benefited us. So they will be feeling a regret for what they have done before or for watching television before. In that vertical, sorry, and later each and every kid will love you more for what you did. Now they will be very violent if you take away the TV set. But once they find that it is very useful for them, it is very interesting for them, they will not hate you, they will love you forever what you have done. What you have done? What, what did you do? You have taken away the TV set away. And later they will identify uh, the benefit of what you have done. Okay, this is a poem. This is the poem. And it's very interesting, humorous, as well as uh, it is very informative, I think. Okay, so please children, um, please read it uh, many times, study it. There, there are little more of this poem, but it's given, it's not given in your textbook. This is enough for you. I'll send you the question answers, meanings, etc. Please study it. Next week you will have a unit test. Next week means Monday, sorry, today is Monday. And next Monday, next Monday you must write the unit test of two lessons together. Okay, please be ready. Uh, read the form and send the question answers to your, sorry, to Google Classroom. Children, page number 83. There are certain poetic devices and uh, these poetic devices are used to uh, make the poem more attractive and uh, for inter making it interesting to read. Okay, and we have already learned simile uh, personification extra and here there are some more uh, poetic devices which are given here. One is simile. Simile, you know that when we compare a thing to another, that is called direct. If it is direct comparison, that is called simile. For example, if I compare um, uh, uh, Akbar to a, a lion, Akbar food like a lion, that means we are giving more qualities of this lion: braveness, courage, and also strength. All this are giving to Akbar. Uh, by using the word like or as, that is called simile, and that is uh, by using such a word like as or like. If we use, uh, if we compare things, that is called simile. That is direct comparison. A metaphor is also comparison only, but we compare it without using the word like or as. Akbar for Akbar was the lion in a bat. Okay, there we are not using like or as, but it's clear that there is a comparison between lion and other. So that is indirect comparison without using the word like or as. Another one is alliteration. That is repetition of consonant word in the beginning of words in a line. Uh, okay, we'll see. A repetition. We have seen here read and read and read and read. That is to stress something. Okay, in order to give um, importance for an idea or um, or something that is a, for example for some points that we use repetition. Hyperbole that is exaggeration. Okay, and we have seen here uh, their eyes pop out. That may not happen, but the poet is exaggerating in order to and give more um, importance for the idea that he has to convey. And some more is given that pun, pun that is a play, word play, we can say word play, pun. And uh, here it given as have a beautiful day. You see the spelling of be and beautiful. And that's word play. 
next one is onomatopoeia onomatopoeia means uh, giving this uh, by telling the word we will get the sound for example um, if we uh, the cross cause c a w s ka 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 that is the sound of the cross that is onomatopoeic sound okay and also a snake hisses a sound when it hisses the same sound is the hiss so that is called onomatopoeia personification we have already learned that is comparing an inanimate object giving human qualities okay and we will do the exercise now on um, page number 83 Examples are given in the right side, but that is not match. You have to match it. Similarly, I told you that that is the direct comparison. Can you find out now where it is used as or like? The similarly, that is his brain becomes as soft as cheese. Okay, brain and cheese are compared here. Uh, A fourth one, metaphor. Metaphor indirect comparison. What is the thing that is used here? Television is a monster. Television is like a monster. It is not used. Television is a monster. That is metaphor. Alliteration. If I, any uh, line which gives kind of repetition of consonant sounds in the beginning of uh, a line. Pirates wearing purple pants. P is repeated there in the beginning of um, three words. Pirates wearing purple pants. Okay, that is so. Alliteration is pirates wearing purple pants. Repetition. We already know they used to read, read, read. Okay, hyperbole. The last one is they and stare and their eyes pop. You please do this exercise and remember it. Children, uh, for this unit test, you will have meanings also. And for the term exam, we were not used to ask this meanings. But for the quarterly, as we are conducting as unit wise, there will be meanings also. Please study the meanings also. Okay. All the best for your exams. Prepare well and write.